should have seen your face. You were like, <laughs> oh, God, that was worth it. Anyway, lads, chaps around the world, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be diving into some spooky stuff. The spookiest stuff around right now. I'm telling you now, a lot of lads have been telling me about this now. I tell you, what we're looking at here now today is a bit of creepy pasta stuff. So what we're talking about now is a bit of the old spooky, scary, dark webby fucking weird shit. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about Siren Head. Yes. Lads and ladies around the feckin' world, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be diving deep into the lore and the spooky scariness that is Siren Head. Now, we've all heard of many different urban legend -y typed creepy pasta stories of weird creatures that got popular over the internet. We had the likes of Slenderman, we had the Rake, and many, many more. Even Momo. Remember that weird shit? But now, we've got something new. Something that has been hitting the internet by storm and creeping people out all over the world, and that is called Siren Head. So today, I'm going to dive into as much Siren Head information as possible in this video. I've stayed away from all Siren Head videos, of course. It's very difficult to stay away from everything since the thing is plastered all over the internet. But I stayed away from the story of Siren Head and why Siren Head is even a thing. So today, in this video, lads, we are going to be diving in and learning about Siren Head together. And that's from checking out the fan wiki page, checking out some videos about Siren Head, and even diving in to some terrifying Siren Head games. So strap yourselves in, lads. Get your warm blanket, lock the door behind you, and turn out the lights. Because this is gonna be fucking terrifying. Here we go. Also, I apologize for my hair. It's gone so long now that I just couldn't be bothered putting gel on it. So deal with it. Alright? Right, lads. So... Huge shout out to my dude, Mark's Top List, for putting together a little list for me today. I sent this poor chap down the deepest, weirdest rabbit hole he had ever been. The Siren Head rabbit hole. And he pulled out six different things for us to check out together. And I really hope you're recovering from this disturbing, traumatic experience, Mark. Can we get an F in the chat for Mark Sanity, please? Anyway, the first thing we're going to check out is, of course, is the general wiki page. This is going to give us a general description and some audio files containing the sounds of the siren head. And he put in brackets, the first one is loud. So if you're wearing headphones, turn it down a little bit or turn it up. Whatever weird, sick, sadistic shit you're into. Let's check this out. We are now in the weird, wonderful world of Villains Wiki, where we're going to learn some weird and disturbing shit to do with Siren Head. So, come along children, gather around. We got some reading and some learning to do. Okay, so, first of all, this page is cool. Look at all these awesome characters. Esdeath, Frieza, awesome. We even have Red Skull and Freddy in there. What a vastly colorful mixture of characters. All right, so first things first, lads and ladies. Let's check out Siren Head. Let's have a little read here. Actually, look at this picture. That's creepy as all hell. Let's, let's have a read of this first. Full name unknown spooky already alias siren head siren head siren head lamp head all right patron saint of going missing without a trace of creeping dread of bad things coming okay origin trevor henderson mythos okay so trevor henderson is responsible for creating this abomination thanks trevor occupation stalker that's a real occupation Power skills, stalking, sound manipulation, superhuman strength, superhuman speed. Wait, wouldn't you have to be human to be considered superhuman, though? Wouldn't you just say strength and speed? Anyway, stealth, shapeshifting, possibly, possibly shapeshifting? Hmm. Deception, perception, manipulation, body manipulation, corruption, dimensional travel. Oh, okay. Hobbies? Siren Head's got hobbies, lads. Stalking, luring, chasing, and tormenting its victims. Hunting for humans. <laughs> Are you serious? That's hilarious, bro. Um, goals. Lure, murder, and possibly eat its victims. Survive? Possibly. Mm, probably not. Crimes. Stalking, mass murder, kidnapping, man-eating. Type of villain? Monstrous predator. 
He sounds like a swell guy. Absolutely fucking swell, so he does. Right, so let's have a read of this. We have a little bit of a quote here, lads. She was on vacation with her husband, and they were scoping out graveyards on the way. As you do. As you do. <laughs> when she saw it rising out of the old cemetery, big as an old Maccabeer telephone pole, was this some kind of bizarre art piece the authorities hadn't gotten wise to yet? Even as she stepped out of the car, the megaphones on its head screeched to life. Nine, eighteen, one, child, seventeen, remove, vile. A buzzing doubled voice screamed random words at her. At this point, it jerked into motion, striding down the hill towards her. Okay, that, that, that put an image in my head that I don't think is going to go away right now. But that is terrifying. Siren Head, also written as Siren Head, and more rarely Siren Dash Head, is a hostile cryptid and urban legend created by the artist Trevor Henderson. Fair play to you, Trevor. Fair feckin' play to you. It is a tall, mysterious humanoid creature known for its odd appearance and the various sounds that emanate out of its head, which consists of a metallic pole with sirens attached to it. Lovely. Alright, so we have the appearance here as well. Almost all images of Siren Head are presented very similarly to each other, featuring Siren Head as a tall, thin, desiccated, dehydrated with mummified skin and jewel sirens on its head. Henderson has confirmed that Siren's Head sirens have the ability of releasing various sounds out of them, such as conversations, white noises, and extremely loud sounds which can affect ears. Instead of sirens, different objects are visible on Siren Head's head, which two images depicted. In the first photo, more than two sirens are seen on Siren Head's, Siren Head's head. This is like freaking tongue twisters, man. While in the second photo, Siren Head's head is that of a street lamp which gave Siren Head the nickname Lamp Head. Okay, so that's where Lamp Head comes into play. Interesting. Um, these two photographs verify two theories. Siren Head has the ability of transforming, changing its appearance in order to fit with the world, or subspecies of Siren Head are existing. Interestingly enough, the only metallic piece of Siren Head are the sirens on its head. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's <laughs> this is hilarious, bro. <laughs> this is fucking funny. I love it. While its body is made out of organic veins, wizened old skin, and wires, which are spiraled on its torso and neck, some theorize that the sirens aren't naturally appearing. Okay. Henderson also goes on to explain that Siren Head might be packed up with a loose cassette tape and a massive tape recorder. <laughs> what? This may be the fine explanation of how Siren Head captures sounds of the victims and surrounding sounds which Siren Head replays as bait. Hmm. Yes, because I heard Siren Head can mimic loved ones and family members and stuff that may have gone missing and then people are going searching for their loved ones and then end up hearing them, but not quite because it's Siren Head manipulating them with his fucking tape recorder. <sighs> God, Siren Head is a fucking legend, boy. On April 25th, 2020, Henderson released a statement on Twitter which goes on to explain that Siren Head isn't a man-made creature and that Siren Head has the ability of imitating various human technology. Henderson also explained that Siren Head's appearance variates on who is seeing it. Okay, that, that is actually very interesting. People might see different versions of Siren Head, although the anatomy is always the same. The thin and skeletal figure with different heads explaining the sightings of the so-called lamp head and the multi-headed variation. This is actually very interesting stuff. Let's keep reading. Siren Head is a physical entity, but its anatomy and existence are terrifying and meaningless to us. Siren Head isn't being of our reality. Instead, Siren Head is much distinguished than us, as it is not limited by our laws of nature. Basically, Siren Head is a constantly changing manifestation which almost always appears different in the victim's view of Siren Head. The information changes all knowledge we have on Siren Head, which opens various theories about the creature. 
In the past, people theorized how can Siren Head have sirens, even in the distant past before actual sirens were invented, if the laws of our nature, time and space don't apply to it. It is possible Siren Head may be a being of unlimited power, all-knowing and able to move in any direction of the universe. However, these are all just speculation at the moment. Right, so Siren Head is basically a god. Is that what you're saying? Is is this the new Ultra Instinct Shaggy Siren Head? Holy shit. Powers and abilities, this should be interesting. Let's let's have a quick read through his powers and abilities, lads. Mimicry, Siren Head has the ability to release sounds of news broadcasts, human conversations, sirens, and screams. One report claims that Siren Head was able to kill a group of people by mimicking their friend's voice. Another post caption suggests Siren Head can use his broadcast to block out the cries of his victims. The latest sighting shows a five-headed Siren Head using his loud sound to possibly kill off many people as they were found with bursts, eardrums, and soft tissues. What the fuck? <laughs> Alright, so now we have strength. It is believed that Siren Head is extremely powerful due to his size. Siren Head is able to break down trees or various heavy objects at will. So he's basically a kaiju as well. Speed. In one sighting of Siren Head, a couple reported that Siren Head can be incredibly agile. The couple were driving home until they saw the graveyard. They ended up checking out the grave where they saw Siren Head. According to the story, Siren Head started running towards them at an extremely rapid pace. Yeah, that's fucking scary, dude. He can do stealth as well. Uh, some say that the Siren Head is stronger moving rel relative of trees, which is... Uh, the reason why Siren Head can blend inside of a forest or behind a tree. He can stay motionless for days at a time to blend in with his surroundings. With Trevor mentioning on his Tumblr that Siren Head can cling to ceilings sometimes to make his body blend in with the wires and look like a PA system. <laughs> Stating that he might have used the tactic to take several people in Detroit. <laughs> what? That's serious. Trevor also mentioned that Siren Head makes no sound while moving. Oh, wow, that's creepy. Saying he can be almost completely silent. With yet another post saying he was able to move when someone's back was turned without the person knowing. So you're saying Siren Head showed Drax everything he knows. I'm sure I'm invisible. Hi, Drax. <laughs> Transformation. Okay, so we basically know that Siren Head can appear in different ways depending on different people. He can shapeshift in certain ways as well to blend in with his surroundings. We basically got that already. Um, we do have some audio samples to check out. This one we're going to check out for sure. Now, Mark did say the first one is loud, so I'm going to take one ear off just in case. Um, I would do the same if I were you lads. Let's see it. What is that? This is official EAS sound, which the entity has been heard using on multiple occasions. Oh, it's so creepy. Okay. More. About this file, download file. We don't need to download the file. Let's not put that onto my computer, shall we? Now, this is the second one. Uh, these following entries are not canon to Trevor Henderson's mythos. Okay, so this is recorded March 28, 1999 in Belgrade, Serbia. Entity heard all over the suburban regions of the city. Over 100 residents affected with severe hearing loss. Should I really play this? <laughs> when the populace was interviewed, they thought at first that another NATO bombing campaign was taking place due to the ongoing efforts at the time to push Serbian forces out of Kosovo but became increasingly confused as no bombs or jets were heard. One person reported seeing what looked like an out-of-place lamp post on a hill near a graveyard approximately 10 minutes before the sounds began. And this, ladies and gents, is the sounds.
There's something terrifying and creepy listening to these. Someone speaking. Creepy. Creepy. Okay, so the third audio recording we have is recorded June 20th, 2010 in Chicago, Illinois. So this is a lot more recent. Multiple witnesses called in the CPD when tornado sirens started blaring unexpectedly at night, seeming from the direction of Willow Springs Woods. When the CPD arrived at the scene, the sound had stopped and the source could not be located. And this was the recording. That's the common siren head sound, isn't it? That's the one that you say it's you just hear that people keep going on about. Huh. So is that a tornado siren? Interesting. That has to be the most creepiest one. Has to be, dude. That's weird. That's very weird. Okay. All right. So now we have one more. Recorded August 28th, 2018 in Ware, Australia. Austria, sorry. Between 324 and 326. Interesting. It's close to the witch's hour. The sound originated from a forest on the outskirts of the town. When investigated in the afternoon, authorities found an empty tent and two wallets, both wallets still had their contents in them, along with IDs, one belonging to Joachim Muller and the other to Bruno Koffler. Both were residents of Ware and have since been reported missing. Let's have a listen. Well, that's really creepy. It's definitely in the middle of a wood. Oh, fuck that. That's actually the creepiest one so far. These are actually giving me goosebumps, dude. I don't like it. I don't like it. I love it. <laughs> okay. I ain't going to sleep tonight. <laughs> right, lads. So that was the fandom wiki. For Siren Head. I hope this was informative and somewhat educational for you lads and ladies at home. But now it's time to check out some videos. It's time to get even more weird than that. This is the origin of the Siren Head animation. Let's have a watch. Oh wow, okay. Hang on a minute here lads. What is this? Of course it would decide to come back today. Of all days. Any foggy day is fair game, but today, if it was smart enough to keep track of time, I'd say it was mocking me. He's talking about Siren Head. It would have been easy to stay home that day, maybe do something useful, 
help pond the fields, or hang the washing up to dry like Ma asked. But the sun was so warm and inviting. A perfect summer day like that couldn't be wasted. But even then, there's a million other things a kid could have done in the farm, bathe in sunshine. Plenty of places I could have gone. Of course, they told us to stay out of the woods, but I always sneaked out, and they never stopped me. I thought Ma was paranoid. Who ever heard of people disappearing in those woods? Oh, here we That's go. the kind of stuff you hear in children's books. Oh, here we Ma go. Ma gave that indifferent listen to your mother nod whenever Ma brought it up. Probably too busy to care what she was lecturing me about. Despite it all, I figured this is real life, not some fairy tale. There's nothing but critters and mischief out there. What really sent me into the woods that day was naivete, bravery, and a girl named Caroline. Uh, of course, there's a girl involved! Even after thinking about it all these years, I can't quite put my finger on the moment things went wrong. The dog knows Maybe something. Maybe I just wasn't alert or... Dog knows what's up. Miley Senses sure danger. Was, though. Good old boy. His walk got more and more tense. And he started growling. He always did that when meeting new people, so it was easy to dismiss. By that time, we were getting pretty deep into the woods, and I expected her to pop out from behind a tree at any second. She was definitely nearby. But I couldn't find her. And then she started calling my name, asking me to find her. Oh no! That's not her, bro! Her voice was muffled, staticky. Oh, it's not or her, bro! Maybe she was just further away from the spot where we said we'd meet. She wasn't as familiar with the woods as I was, so I started to worry that she'd gotten lost, even though she didn't sound scared. I arrived at the meeting spot, an old stump that kind of looked like it had a face carved into it. Oh, that's really the weird. Were darker, the trees much taller and more dense, and there seemed to be fewer creatures around. It was quiet. No bird calls or squirrels scurrying up and down the tree trunks. I called to her a few times, but she just kept calling for me to come. Milo was still on edge, and I was starting to feel tense, too. That could oh, be when no. things went wrong. After a few minutes, I was worried that she had hurt herself and needed my help. So I went off in the direction of her voice, deeper into the woods. I called to her over and over, getting more concerned with every passing minute. No, dude, don't do it, bro. Were immense. Shit. I can't say that the tales of people disappearing at the hands of a forest-dwelling monster didn't cross my mind. In my head, I was preparing a speech to recite for Caroline when I found her. Something about sending me on a wild goose chase through the woods and making me worry about her. She sounded like she was nearby, but something about her voice was freaking me out. I thought about turning back and calling it quits, but I felt like I was getting close. Then Milo started barking the loudest I'd ever heard him, and darted back and forth around me. I panicked, and backed up too quickly, tripping over oh, the road no. and falling. A sharp pain shot up my leg. From the forest floor, I looked up at the canopy, and my jaw dropped. Oh no. Standing at at least 40 feet tall was the nastiest combination of man and machine I'd ever seen. Its arms and legs were so thin, I could see the outlines of veins and bones beneath the skin. There oh! wasn't the flesh on its torso, either. It looked like a, a vacuum-sealed skeleton. But the creepiest part was its head. Or lack of a head. Atop its neck were a pair of sirens facing in opposite directions. No eyes or ears. 
but it did have mouths inside those sirens. And as I looked it up had at mouths? it, completely in shock, it turned down towards me and opened its mouths. Jackson! Jackson! Ah, oh, no, fake that straight. Nah, to my feet and get the feck the out of there, man. Milo bolted by my side. Oh, Lord. Hearing the deafening sounds of trees cracking around me, their enormous trunks splintering and crashing to the ground. That's when the siren started blaring from the creature's head. My muscles burned and my lungs screamed for air as I burst into the clearing of our east field. Ma was standing by the truck on the far side, her mouth open in disbelief. I'm sure she could have felt the ground shaking from a mile away. Pa was already running towards me with a shotgun. What? As he saw the horror that came behind me, he stopped dead in his tracks. Eyes wide, he pointed to the entrance to the tornado shelter built under the house. I didn't think that was going to be enough to keep us safe from this behemoth, but my body was giving out. The oh. pain in the leg from falling the woods was this is, with every stride. This is awesome! I everything I had into that last stretch of my sprint to the shelter. Milo managed to keep pace, and Pa ran ahead to unbolt the door. Ma broke out of a trance and scrambled towards the shelter, too. The sirens blared on, though ironically there was no tornado. The door flew open and Pa dove inside. Milo leaped in ahead of me, and I stumbled in a few seconds later. It took a few beats for me to realize Ma hadn't come stumbling through the door behind me. No. She was running as quickly as she could manage, wild eyes staring right into mine, screaming the whole way. But the thing was faster than her. Its final step toward her shook the ground so intensely, I thought the house was going to come down on top of us. Oh, fuck this of shit. Feet, and its massive hand came down on top of her. I looked away. Oh Ma no! Was fixed. Ma! I've never seen such helplessness and pain on his face. Ma cried out my name as it lifted her up, then turned to walk back towards the woods. We couldn't do anything but watch. Jackson, there he is now. How many years later? Milo, come on. We got an old score to settle. No way! There hasn't been a day in my life I haven't thought about that morning. Thought about that... That thing. How it ruined our family. Ruined our lives. I've mourned Ma every day. And never even knew what happened to her. How she might have died. Whether it tortured her or not. Or if it just kept a prisoner somewhere. I lost Pa that day too. He blamed me for the whole mess. Started drinking. And eventually left. All these years. It's been just you and me, Milo. And now we're going to finish this. Wherever you've been all these years. I'm sure you've only hurt people. Taken others who were loved. Torn families apart. Oh my god, this is tense. The way you hunt people, though. Jesus, lads. I'm one of the only ones who ever got away from you. You know what that means? I know you. And I've got nothing left to lose. I hope you're ready to meet your maker, Siren Head. <laughs> Jackson, come. Is he actually gonna take him on? You took Caroline. How many other Even the dog's pissed. Freak? Holy shit! He's gonna take this thing down! Or not? Come on, doggy. Bite his leg. Oh, no. Milo. Come, Milo. No, Milo. 
Thank you all for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed our original story on the origin of Siren Head. Oh, that's creepy, dude. Lads, massive respect. Massive for respect to SCP Animated Tales from the Foundation for this awesome video. Smash it, smashing the like, hitting the sub. Wow. <laughs> That was so creepy! So well done as well. Very simple animation, but it told the story very, very well. The narration was fantastic as well. Oh, wow. Siren Head is really creepy. Very, very creepy. I like that story. But now we have Siren Head, the creation. This is another animation. The poor dog. Right, so this is somewhat of a continuation. Wait, is he okay? Where is he? Is he down some hole? It's about time. I've been wondering if you were gonna wake up at all. Where... Where am I? How did I get here? I imagine the same way I did. Him. Yeah, right. I guess I never considered it had a gender. It was always just this thing. This monster. Name's Charlotte. And if it's any consolation, I'm sorry your luck has brought you here. My name's Jackson. Same to you. What's your story? Clearly you already know about the Siren Ed. Have you had run-ins with him before? You could say that. You took my mom. I'll admit I've never fully recovered. I mean, I went after the guy with just an axe and a shotgun. How nutty must I have been? Every night for years, when I laid my head down, it wasn't the swaying of the wheat or the chirp of the crickets I heard. It was the distorted, muffled voice of my mother speaking to me. It was Siren Head. Wow. That all sounds really rough. I know you've probably heard it from everyone close to you, but it isn't your fault, Jackson. Oh, I know it isn't my fault. It's his. Now tell me. How did you find yourself down here? Mine might not be as tragic as yours, but it is complicated, to say the least. In my former life, I was a doctor. Well, at least I was training to be one. When okay. it all began, I was simply a resident, under the tutelage of the master surgeon, Dr. Vincent Henderson. God, did I respect that man. There was no problem he couldn't fix, big or small. Man, if he wasn't set on fixing everything he could. Luckily, I felt the same way. I thought the two of us could change the world. I would have followed him to the end of the earth. Sometimes, it feels like I did. About two years into my residency, he became extremely focused on philanthropic aid. We started taking trips to hospitals in more impoverished areas, volunteering entire weekends at a time. He kept wow. pushing me harder, saying that we needed to do more. It was our civic duty. I was constantly exhausted. I couldn't catch a break. If it was anybody else, I would have given up and found a new surgeon to study under, but he was so inspiring. I pushed through so much exhaustion and pain for him and for the people we were helping. Invariably, there were patients that we could do nothing for. Either we were too late or they were too You got to respect the frontline workers, I lads. To become accustomed to death as most doctors do. Seriously, with everything that's going on but right Vincent now, took it hard every this single hits time. a lot harder. He said it felt like he personally failed them. One night, we were closing up his practice, and he pulled a bottle of gin out of his desk drawer. Told me I could stay for a drink if I'd like. And of course I did. As the night went on, he got more and more distraught. Going on his usual tirade, rating himself for not doing enough. He said that every patient who died in his care was a life that he'd wasted. Dude, that stuck out to me. He never said that before. So I tried consoling him, saying that it wasn't up to him what they did with their lives. Then he looked at me intensely and said, Maybe not, 
But there is something we can do with their deaths. Yeah, we follow him into an exam room at the back of the practice. Wait, what? Pushed a floor to ceiling storage cabinet aside to reveal a metal door that I'd never seen before. What is this doctor hiding, bro? What is this? Hey, Milo. Where are you, boy? Oh no, Marlo. Good dog. Wow. A secret room. What was in there? Yeah, I want to know. The room was a cold storage unit. I'd never known about it all my months of working with him. He unlocked it and ushered me inside. I remember the shock, mostly. And the smell. There were four bodies laying on metal exam tables covered in thin white sheets. What? Panic started to rise and every muscle in my body was ready to run, but a certain curiosity held me back. He walked to the first body and looked at me before lifting the sheet. It was a Caucasian male, about 40, bloated and extremely pale. His skull had been opened and sewn shut again and there were pins sticking into his scalp. What? There was a speaker in his mouth, stretching his lips abnormally wide. The second body Vincent uncovered was a middle what Eastern the female, fuck? no older than 30. Who I could tell had been beautiful before she was hacked up. The third one was very thin, probably someone who suffered from anorexia. She was definitely less bloated than the others, but that could have been because the body was fresher. At this point, my mind was spinning and it felt hard to breathe. Vincent barely showed any emotion at all, probably just trying to gauge my reaction. He did hesitate slightly before revealing the last body, though. Oh, what I the hell? What, what is going been. on here, the dude? Her head had been removed. Instead of a neck, there was a metal what is happening? sticking out from between the shoulders, and mounted on top of it was a large cone shaped speaker. More like what a megaphone fuck? or a siren than a speaker, really. The body was completely emaciated. The skin was leathery, almost like it had been mummified. I'm gonna stop you right there. This long-winded speech of yours really just boils down to your buddy creating this monster. That's all it is, isn't it? There's more to it. Really, we... We? What do you mean, we? Oh no, is she responsible as well? Right after he showed me all of that, he explained the project to me. He needed help, he said. The two of us were doing all that we could, but it wasn't enough. There was still enormous suffering, even within our immediate community. Through this loss of life, he said he could build something useful. Bodies to help aid us, if he could reanimate them. This was going to be his greatest achievement. And he asked me to help him. He said he was very close to finishing the project. And he was sure his next one would work. But the operation would be delicate and lengthy. He needed me. So what? You're in love with this guy? And you just do anything he asks? It... Sounds that way. Complicated. I didn't say yes right away. I said I'd need time to think it over, which he agreed to. You were just fucking mesmerized and hypnotized by this dude. It was unnatural. Seriously, kid, I was torn about it. I couldn't sleep at night. My devotion to him and my belief in his work were pitted against this grotesque and extremely illegal project. But he procured a body just a couple days later, and when he called on me to step up, I, I just couldn't refuse. Why? Procured a body? Why couldn't you refuse? Jesus, did you never ask where he got them from? Holy heck. Of course I did. I had a lot of questions. So many that I thought he would accuse me of prying and throw me out of his office, or, or worse. But he was always patient and answered every question with the same calm logic he used that first night. The bodies were from a colleague of his. With the number of people that he helped, he'd won a ridiculous amount of favors and trust in the community. And why the speakers? Oh, the muscles used to create speech are much harder to control than muscles in your arms or legs. These things didn't need to talk much, but if they were going to interact with our patients, they need to speak a little. So the speakers were easier than trying to get their mouths to work. Well, we only accomplished that once. On him. I wasn't even in the room for that part. He asked me to step out, but the rest of the operation was grueling. 
prepping the body took nearly 20 hours. And then we had to remove the head, attach the sirens, string wires around. What the actual fuck? This is so creepy! Skin. Felt more like an installation than an operation in some ways. We pumped that body full of steroids, had it attached to huge monitors, used electric charges. It was so experimental. I had no idea how he came up with these techniques. If you could even call them that. So I was right. You made it. Sure, we both did. I felt conflicted the entire time, but once the thing came to life... You have to understand, I thought this would only lead to good things, less suffering. I was proud to some extent. How the hell At did he first, make it? it? Go really well. We would give it simple commands and it would listen. We just kept him in his office doing little tasks under supervision. Then, I think, Vincent went back and worked on him a little more without me. He started growing. And by all laws of logic, that shouldn't have happened. He wasn't truly, really alive. This is so surprised. weird. Holy he shit. He became more violent and hard to control. And one day he just broke through the wall of the office and ran off. We tracked him down to this wooded area and it wasn't hard. <laughs> he created this path of destruction wherever he went. It wasn't anything like he does now though. He was only about 10 feet tall at the time. When we found him, he was blundering around in circles and spouting nonsense from his sirens. He seemed confused, honestly. It was all just radio static and the occasional word jumble. Vincent and I tried to talk to him, but he either didn't understand us anymore or didn't care what we were saying. Eventually, Vincent decided he was a lost cause and wanted to try again with a sixth body. But by that point, I was thoroughly horrified at what our creation had become. I told him I was out. I couldn't continue the project anymore. And I've spent all my years since then tracking Siren Head, trying to figure out how to undo my mistake. Milo, there you are. Oh no, Milo. Good boy, Milo. Milo, not the dog. idea what grief you've brought people i lost my whole family because of this thing who knows what it's done to other people in the 12 years since then you think i haven't thought about that i've spent my whole life trying to make up for what i did how could you create something you had no control over but we did i don't know what vincent did to it after that first operation that's what made us lose control Sounds like you're trying to tell yourself you're not to blame. Like you weren't responsible for everything it's done. No, that's not true at all. <laughs> oh, shit. Please, you have to help me. I don't think so. You killed my mother. Oh, no way, dude. To be continued? No. <laughs> Shit, bro. Oh, whoa. Okay, so we still have a few more videos to check out. Now we have What is Siren Head? Creepy Files. Let's educate ourselves a little bit further. Those animations are creepy, and I like the story that they came up with, but. Let's dive in a little Welcome deeper. Back to the creepy files. Today we're going to talk about one of Trevor Henderson's creations. Now I'll probably be covering other Trevor Henderson creations, but for now let's talk about Siren Head. Let's just start by looking through all the posts that include Siren Head, as well as lore, and other posts that I feel may be connected. All the posts I'm going to be going through are from Trevor Henderson's Instagram page. This is the first Siren Head post. The caption reads, she was on vacation with her husband, and they were scoping oh, out Oh, yeah, we just read away, that. As you do. This is so it, weird. Rising out of the old cemetery, big as an old macabre telephone pole. Was this some kind of bizarre art piece the authorities hadn't gotten wise to yet? Even as she stepped out of the car, the megaphones on its head screeched to life. 9, 18, 1, child, 17, remove, vile. A buzzing, doubled voice screamed random words at her. 
At this point, it jerked into motion, striding down the hill towards her. Next post. July 16th, 1995. Chad Gewick, Gew uh, Buick is found wandering the woods of Canyon Creek Gewick. in northwest Arkansas. He is admitted with minor injuries, and when questioned, he claims his friends were taken or killed by something huge striding through the trees that mimicked their voices. The next post, captioned, on the back of the photo is written, Arizona Desert Family Vacation, oh, 1966, weird. in magic marker. The rash of disappearances had two commonalities. It was Look at that, he's a street lamb now. On their way home from work, from some social outing, and it was always dark by the time people started wondering where they were. It was always past when the street lights come on. Here is where things get interesting. The head is no longer a siren, but instead a street lamp. But I'll get into that in the analysis. The next post is Siren Head Facts. Siren Head is around 40 feet tall, about the size of a telephone pole. Skin looks like rusty metal, but is actually dried and mummified skin. Arms are as long as the length of the body. Big reach like a gibbon. Has been seen with different head arrangements, though it is unclear whether or not these are subspecies, or if it's able to change its head to better hide when hunting. It is a highly skilled predator using deception and subterfuge to confuse and disorient prey. It is unclear if or how it gains nourishment from the things it kills. Speakers constantly pump out strange music, odd snippets of conversation, and angrily shouted words and numbers. When it's asleep, it plays white noise. Speakers are the only actual metal when in its, it's body asleep. with its dried skin. Abdomen and chest show wires pressed against the skin. They writhe when it's agitated. Will remain motionless while hunting, sometimes for days at a time. Most frequently seen in rural town areas and in heavy wooded areas. Head will rotate on its neck as it broadcasts, much like an owl looking for prey. Next, we have this post. Photo discovered from an abandoned cell phone by father and son hikers in Yellowstone National Park, July 14th, 2016. Now, I decided to include this one because I think its design is similar enough to be related, even though you can't tell if it's actually a siren head. Next. Visitors to the motel oh, weird. item as a piece of grotesque statue art, according to Goodnight Inn manager Ann Garnick not knowing its appearance preceded a grim, and then it cuts off. The next Siren Head post is... For the next 30 Please, seconds, this station will conduct a test of the emergency Does broadcast system. Me? This is only well, a test. Out. This is only a test. This one Whoa. simply has the caption, followed on my morning walk. Oh, and what the I hell? This because while I feel like they don't look exactly the same, they could be similar or related. Next post, the notion that vampire... Oh, Aw, fuck that! squashed. It took a step towards the doorway as worm-like fingers curled over the top of the frame. Next, when they'd been gone long enough for the parents to get worried, the rangers responding found where they'd set up and the remains. And the photos. Now, while this one has a humanoid head, I still feel it's worth putting here. Next, we have another picture of just Siren. That Hill. one Many residents is incredibly the realistic. Before the incident, complaining of sirens and garbled announcements echoing across the lake. Here we have another one that's a little bit different. No one seemed to see the same thing he did, so he just drove on the shoulder until it passed and tried not to look into his rearview mirror until he'd made the turn and it was long out of sight. This one is especially interesting because it seems to have four arms. This one is quite simple, simply reading Disappearance in Crudson, Indiana. Next, we have the last Siren Head post on the Instagram at the time of Oh Oh, shit. It long before we look at the, the size of him. The fields, unmoving. I could tell it was looking at me, even though it didn't have a head. So let's figure Fuck. out what it all means, at least in my opinion. Jeez, it's so gather, weird and creepy. From a little bit of speculation on my part. Siren Head is a 40 foot tall, half metal, half organic, anomalous creature that feeds on humans. However, it doesn't eat them. Instead, it sort of consumes them into itself, not physically, more metaphysically. His form of consumption is adding you to his roster of voices, sort of like the face stealer in Avatar. That way, he can then lure other people. However, Siren Head isn't the only one of these creatures. He's a subset of Trevor Henderson's universe. Some have humanoid heads, some have other disguised heads, some even have more than four limbs. However, how these other versions eat is unclear. Now let's talk about their movement, the disappearances, and their locations. The appearances seem to range from Arkansas to Arizona to Indiana to Idaho, Iowa to Idaho, Canada to Mexico, and is seen in areas from forests to cities. This is one reason I think these are different creatures. They've adapted to different environments. However, all of them appear to live in the non-coastal, middle south United States. They move slowly, which means they mostly wait for their prey to come to them. They use their appearance as camouflage, typically hiding in plain sight, using their means of camo, in Siren Head's case, it being his Siren Head, as a way to attract prey. 
In Siren Head's case, he can use the voices he steals to lure people to him, although it's still unclear whether his random words voice is one of his victims or his original voice. What did you think of this episode of The Creepy Files? Let me know in the comments Creepy. below. Creepy. That's what I Instagram thought about that episode. You can also suggest what I should cover next over there, too. Jesus Christ, so creepy, dude. Why is Siren Head a thing, dude? Why? Why do we have to keep making this creepy shit? We have enough nightmares at night. Now we have the story of Siren Head. I'm guessing it's the same thing, just spelt wrong. She was on vacation with her husband and they were scoping... Here we go. Here we go. The Here's the actual did. story now, and lads. saw it. Rising out of the old cemetery, big as an old macabre telephone pole. Was this some kind of bizarre art piece the authorities hadn't gotten wise to yet? <laughs> Even as she stepped out of the car, the megaphones on its head screeched to life. Nine, 18, there it is. Ah, it's creepy, I don't like it. I don't like it. buzzing, doubled voice screamed random words at her. At this point, it jerked into motion. Oh, what the fuck? down the hill towards... Oh, ew! CGI Siren Head! containment procedures. There is someone known as only SCP-6789. SCP-6789 SCP? is to be kept at all costs in a room of at least 20.8 meters in length and width. I've always wanted to dive SCP into the SCP lore. SCP-6789 must always be kept in his cell and cannot be released at any time. If occurrence of a breach in the facility happens, the cell of SCP-6789 has to be protected. No one must ever have access to the creature's cell, even if it may cost you your life. What the hell? What is that even this from? This creature is known as Siren Head. He is an urban legend creature, mainly known for his odd appearance. Is, is Siren Head Siren actually an Head SCP is creature? Siren a 40 foot tall, skinny humanoid creature with two sirens as its head. The creature's arms extend all the way down to the floor, with its fingertips reaching the ends of its legs. Its neck is covered with wires extending upwards towards its head. The wires connect to two megaphones pointing in the opposite direction. This is Siren Head. Siren Head seems to be able to communicate using radio broadcasts, being able to pick up signals from various places and even unknown dates with certain phrases to set up a dialogue, and also imitating nuclear invasion alarms and so on. Therefore, Siren Head can control the audio of the transmission as much as it wants, and may even cause immediate death or even coma. Its what appearance seems to be well malnourished and of an obscure coloration, as if burned very well by its smell of burnt flesh. It is also theorized that Siren Head can make a false alarm of nuclear war and end up creating one. The first depiction of Siren Head was at a graveyard, where a photograph of Siren Head standing in the middle of graves appeared. Siren Head's speakers randomly play odd music, pieces of conversations, and various words and numbers. Siren Head mainly lures in its victims with the voices of their loved ones. As expected, Siren Head is very hostile and dangerous. Siren Head is mainly located in rural towns and wooded areas. Yeah, because he blends in quite well. Siren Head are lost travelers, hikers, and even little children. If the sounds of someone in distress are heard, it can be a method of Siren Head trying to lure the victims into the woods. Since Siren Head can blend in very well with trees, People do not even notice Siren Head, so it could make its brutal attack at any time and get captured while the screams of the victim are being played from Siren Head's sirens. Siren Head was then discovered around the Himalayan mountains in 1986, shortly after reporting high siren alerts and unusual sounds playing from the radio. Rumors started to form of what it could be. Some brave adventurers went to the affected area to find out for themselves. Some brave marines. They were never seen again. Oh no, F in the chat. The soon ordered an evacuation of the area near where Siren Head was and conducted an operation called Operation Radio to learn about the entity within the forest. The military unit sent into Siren Head's territory ended up reporting a huge ringing alarm, which ended up destroying half of the troops' hearing, causing permanent hearing loss. The other half immediately died due to the ringing sounds, 
causing their brains to explode in the process. The rest of the troops tried to run, but one of them was caught by the long arms of the creature, instantly ripping the soldier in half. Jesus. Total, at least 14 deaths were reported on the mission. The area has since been closed off to the world, with a no-fly zone and entry within a 10-mile radius. Years later, a survivor of Operation Radio creates a video game named Siren Head, where the player, portraying a forest ranger, is supposed to escape from Siren Head inside of the woods while searching for a missing hiker. At the beginning of the game, the player starts at two ramps with their car. Eventually, the player turns around and starts exploring the woods. Further on, the player sees various scratch marks along the ground and a few items such as a backpack and a t-shirt covered in bushes. At the end of the woods, the player finds the mutilated dead traveler with blood on the ground. Oh Once shit! Once the player turns around, Siren Head appears behind the player. Siren Head would start chasing the player and releasing various sounds through its sirens, slashing its claws when it gets close to the player. The player's oh. goal is to run away back to the run. and escape the Siren Head. If the Siren Head gets close enough to the player, glitch effects would start appearing and Siren Head would eventually grab the player and kill them instantly. Siren Head is a manifestation of fear, anxiety and war. Siren Head's sound echoes into the victim's mind and creates a clear vision of their inevitable death. We may never know truly from where Siren Head came from and what the creature wants. <laughs> Seriously, man. You know, it's crazy what a simple piece of artwork can turn into on the internet. Literally all of the creepy pastas and weird creatures that you see online that turn into freaking video games, some into fucking full budget AAA titles, all came from creepy pastas and just a simple work of art. We're on to our final video of today, lads. Mysterious Siren Head sightings. Let's have a watch. The internet is filled with masses of information. It sure some is. Some of it educational, some entertaining. And so completely terrifying. Slender Man, there we of go. Of course, not Prime everything example. you find online is truthful. But sometimes, something might just and seem Momo. so real, you'd actually believe it to be true. Today, I want to discuss a type of creature that has been making its rounds on the internet lately. A creature so petrifying, you would just probably read that. wish for your own death before meeting it face to face. Well folks, I present to you the story behind the mysterious sightings of, of Siren, Siren Head. Head. Okay, here we go, deeper down the rabbit hole we go lads. This narrative begins with the introduction to Trevor Henderson. If you've watched my previous videos, this is the guy that created you know it. he is a Canadian freelance illustrator and comics maker, responsible for crafting the unnerving images we all know and love today. But one of his creations comes in the form of a tall mummified creature known as Siren Head. This beast gets his name from the two air raid like sirens on its head that are rumored to blast out a variety of disturbing sounds, such as strange music, number station recordings, sirens, and even snippets of human conversation. The earliest photographic evidence of Siren Head dates back to 1966, when a family on vacation in the Arizona desert captured this image. Here, <laughs> we witness him. Thin, tall, and what seems to be completely stationary. According to Henderson, Siren Head can remain motionless for days at a time, most likely as a hunting tactic. Fast forward 29 years later, Chad Gwick and his friends were hiking later. in the woods of Tanyard Creek, Arkansas, where they apparently had a run-in with the Siren creature. According to Gwick, his friends were snatched by something huge striding through the trees 
that mimicked their voices. As we know, Siren Head is capable of luring people towards him by imitating their loved ones, much like how a mockingbird would mimic the sound it hears. But excluding these two cases, there have been a total of nine confirmed sightings of the siren over the past few years. Nine. Each with nine confirmed sightings, lads. Victims who survived the encounters, such as this photo of the entity upon the disappearance of citizens in Crudson, Indiana. However, these aren't the first recorded incidents of the monster. Ancient rock paintings of Siren Head what? have been found at various locations across North America. Ancient rock paintings? This means he isn't a new species. He's been here all along. He's been here first. But speaking of species, there have also been encounters with creatures that resemble Siren Head, but don't share certain features. For example, in September 2018, People would go missing after nightfall when the street lights turned on. If you take a look at this image, we witness what seems to be Siren Head's body, but with the head of a street light. It's possible Siren Head has the ability to blend and transform into any structure resembling that of a stature. However, there are also theories that he is one of many a large collection of supernatural tall mummified beasts, if you will. But this leads us to the ultimate question. Who is Siren Head? And what is his purpose? It's if freaking creepy is what it is. In the series, Who is Siren Head? You would know I plagued him as the personification of conflict and struggle. But since then, we've learned much more about him. From gazing at the various sightings, it seems apparent that Siren Head is one of the last remaining life forms from a time long before humans. Yep, they were he was here before video, us. Told ya. Explained how Longhorse, one of the ancient beings, has always been the protector of humans. This is seemingly opposite of what we know Siren Head to be. It's quite possible that he is the last of a species and is constantly on the move as a survival technique. But even then, the various sightings of Siren Head are troublesome. Although we don't know much about his history, we do know that he is an incredibly hostile being. So if you ever hear a familiar voice, strange recordings, or sirens while walking alone in the woods, run. What do you think of these images? Let me know down in the comments below. Furthermore, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. This dude's voice is but like as butter. Always, thank you and good night. Mm, I don't like it, but I will leave you a like for sure. <sighs> well, F in the chat for my sleep. I don't know what to say. Siren Head is definitely a very, very, very creepy creature. I mean, seriously. This was pretty... Whoa, wait a minute. Do you hear that? Do you... What is that? I hear sirens. Oh, well, that was weird. Shit, where are we? Okay, we're diving into, um, this weird creepy woods. Holy shit, what the freak? Okay, so I got a flashlight. Can I run and shit? No, this is it. This is, this is me limited to basically just moving around and looking at weird creepy shit. So, this is a Siren Head video game. Ran on the Unreal Engine 4. Uh, right then. Let's see what, uh... Can we walk through the woods? In random places? No, we can't. We have to follow this this creepy ass road. Can I do anything? Can I throw anything? Have I got any presents? Is 
So, I'm gonna go this way. Simply because I don't think it's a good way to go that way. Uh, fuck! Jesus Christ! I got a jump scare from a branch. Holy shit. Yeah, this game has definitely set the tone already. The My hairs are standing up. How do you beat this game? It's getting closer. Oh Christ, it's getting closer! What the fuck's going on? What is this? Whoa! 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 Fuck! Shit, it's getting close! Oh no! Oh! What happened? Uh... Let's, uh... Let's try that again. Okay! Right, I'm just gonna go straight for it this time. I'm gonna go straight for it. Siren Head, you don't scare me. I know everything about you. I know you're a fear, failed experiment. I know you're just alone. You're just afraid. You just want a friend and I'm here. I'm here to be your friend. I volunteer as tribute. I think you're a swell guy. You're just misunderstood. Completely. We can be friends. We can totally be friends. We can be friends if you want. I don't mind. Ah, oh, yeah, you hear me now. I know you do. Come on, we can be friends. Oh, hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. It's okay, you know. I don't mind. If you want to be friends, we can be friends. Holy shit, look at him. Oh. The freak. I don't mean no harm, dude. I brought muffins. They're freshly baked. My mom baked them this evening. And I brought them here for you. Is there anything I'm supposed to do? Am I supposed to run away from this dude or am I supposed to run towards him? Haha! -ha. Let's see you get past those trees. Betcha you won't. Ha! -ha. Yeah. What of it? What of it? Ha <laughs> ha! You're stuck. Wait, can you walk through those trees? No, you can't. Ha ha ha! Fuck you, Siren Head! Oh, those sirens are getting loud, though. Oh, jeez. This is creepy. Ah, well, now. <laughs> See you later, Siren Head! Or Lamp Head! Whatever name you want to take. Am I supposed to do anything? I don't even know. Can I go this way? Siren Head seems to be okay. Hey, you gobshite! I'm right here! What are you gonna do about it? Fucking nothing. That's what you're gonna do. Can I run past them? Right, I'm out of here. See you later. I'm done with this shit. I'm done with you. I'm done with everything. You're all the same. You, Slendy, Momo, the lot of them. Bunch of fakes. Think you're scary? I'm not afraid of any. Not a single one of you. You bollocks. Wait a minute. Why is the siren getting loud again? I left him behind, didn't I? What the fuck? How? He's not there. Is there something in here? Oh! Oh, what the fuck? What's going on? Bro! Why is that fuzzy? What the fuck's happening? Oh, it's gone. It's, it's, it's calming down. Holy shit, this is creepy. Oh, my hairs are standing up. What is that? Oh, he's right behind me. How the fuck? How did you get past those trees? I don't understand. How, what? What? Stay where you are. I don't want anything to do with you. You can stay right there. You fucking knob jockey. Don't you be scaring me like that. I'm only going for a casual stroll in the park. Do you mind? My heart rate is through the roof right now, lads. I'm legit terrified. <laughs> oh, why do I do this to myself? Oh, shit. Okay, I think we're safe now. I think we're good. I think we've escaped the clutches of Siren Head. I'm going home. Wait, is there a house back here? There's something back here. Oh. Is this your house, Siren Head? It looks a bit small. It looks a bit teeny tiny to me. Let's go in. Whoa, what the heck? What is this?
What is going on? Is there meant to be something here? Oh, a siren head! Do you want me to put the kettle on? Alright. Where is your kettle? <laughs> this is definitely, definitely creepy. Holy shit. And in there? And in there? Nothing? No? Okay. Alright then. Oh, what? How? Oh, he's getting closer. There's nowhere for me to go, though. Oh, shit. Well, you can't come in here. You're too big. You're too big. I'm gonna stay right here. I'm watching you, Siren Head. I can see him. He's out there. No. You ain't getting me. You're not getting me. You can stay where you are now, you bollocks. Oh, shit. He's getting close. He can't come in here, can he? Can he come in here? Why am I shaking so much? Oh, I don't like this. Stop shaking the camera all about. You're freaking me out. I don't like this. Is he there? Is he standing right outside this door? Is he actually making his way in here, though? Oh, Siren Head. Is he standing right... He's right there. Oh. Oh. All right, then. All right, lads. So that was everything to do with Siren Head. We even tried out a Siren Head game there on the Unreal Engine 4. Not entirely sure what the whole idea of the game was, but it definitely was terrifying, especially knowing everything that I know from Siren Head and everything that we just checked out together here today in this video. Um, playing the game then obviously creates a lot more of a tense and creepy atmosphere because you kind of have a brief idea of the history of Siren Head. Granted, there's some stuff we checked out that was kind of fan-made and the story was completely created out of thin air but to be honest everything about Siren Head is not real so any kids watching don't get scared Siren Head is not real it's like Slenderman it's like Momo it's like all of these urban legends and creepy pastures that you see on the internet none of them are real and that's an important message to get across so don't think Siren Head is a real creature to be terrified about this is simply a piece of art that got blown out of proportion and turned into a fictional scary character and honestly what i learned here today i quite enjoyed i love reading this shit creepy passes are fascinating but that is it there's no truth behind them behind them there's no facts there's no history they're simply just made up creepy characters with art and that is it Everything about this was fascinating and I loved it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. If you guys want me to cover more creepy pastas like this, or if you guys want me just to play more Siren Head video games, which I'm sure there's plenty more to play out, play out there now. So I'd be more than happy to do so. Just let me know down below. And if there's actually a way of beating this game, is there something that I'm actually supposed to do in the game, then let me know as well. Because I'd like to know. I'd like to go and give it another shot, maybe, if you want. But I am going to end the video here today, lads. I hope you all enjoyed the Siren Head journey with me. Uh, something that I was really wanting to do and just kind of learn about. And I said, why not make a video on it and, you know, express my reactions and my opinions and my overall consumption of this information with you guys at home. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like. And if you enjoyed it that much, make sure you do hit that subscribe button as well. And turn on notification bells for more videos from me in the future. Anyway, lads, I am going to end it here. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay geeky, stay cool, be awesome, and be happy, and I'll see you dudes in my next horror video. See you later, dudes.